Michael, when you're hitting, it looks so smooth. It looks so effortless. Your timing is so good. How do you do it? In this video, I'm going to show you how to replicate a good contact point because that is really what we always perceive as the smooth part. But again, it starts with your preparation. As usual, the contact point is just a consequence of the work that you put in before. One of the main issues as you progress in your career, as you go from beginner to 3035 and so on and so forth, is that you're encountering different variety of balls. Yet, in most lessons, you're getting the ball with one pace, you know where the ball's coming to. And then when you start playing points or just rallying, that is when you get in trouble because all of a sudden you have different height, different widths, different pace, different depths, and different spins. So you have a ton of variations. As one of my coaches said, no two balls are the same. So you cannot prepare the same way for each ball. As an example, you are in a beginner clinic. We're going to feed the ball nice and easy with almost no pace. So you have time. Okay, I got my grip. I'm going to have my loop. I'm going to get my left foot in front. If we're working on the close stands, I'm going to try to hit the ball here and then I fall through. Those are all the fundamentals. You need them. But what do you do if now the ball comes a lot faster? If you swing with the same pace, if you take all the components in that sequence and you do them in the same speed, you're going to hit the ball late. So what do you have to do? You have to speed the whole thing up to still get into the proper check marks, which is proper grip, proper unit turn, proper racket head drop, proper positioning as you're coming up to contact point. But the timing varies and that really is the key. The timing will change from ball to ball. So as a rule of thumb, rule of thumb, it varies a little bit. Now on a regular rally ball, where you have plenty of time, you're at the highest point of your take back, you have time, the ball bounces, you're not significantly changing the take back anymore, you're not going further back, you're not going higher up, you're about here, whatever that looks like for you, that is individual style. As the ball then rises to you, you can let the racket drop and then accelerate forward and up to contact point, making contact point where you need it to make, out in front, between shoulder and hip. The ball comes to you faster, you have several options. You can speed up the whole thing, which is an option, and I do it all the time. Pro players, good players do it all the time, or you shorten up your take back. It could look something like this. You see that a lot, a squat shot. You use your legs, and of course, you vary the timing, the pace with which you set up and the pace with which you then go through all your stages of your preparation. All right, everyone, I'm really happy that I have a great player with me helping me with all the drills. This is Mo. Mo is the assistant coach for Denver University, played there for all four years, D1 player, All-American. So she's going to help me with the drills. And yeah, let's get going. All right, we're just going four hands cross court. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Mo is working on her split step and early take back. And you see when the ball bounces, her take back is at the furthest position. Maybe the racket is moving a little bit more, but she's ready to drop and drive as the ball is coming up to her. Excellent. All right, and I deliberately start with basket feeds because that gives her more time. And we want time in the beginning for you to make the correct decision. So let's do a couple more. Still nice and easy, very slow pace. And you also notice that Mo is moving up and back. If it's shorter, she moves up, but the preparation is the same. 
So as she's coming up to the ball, again, the bounce comes up to her. She can drop and drive, but by moving up and back, she also adjusts to the height of the ball and keeps the ball between shoulder and hip. All right, the next progression is I am going to take more and more time away from Mo. So I'm just gonna toss, also risking my life here. So Mo, I'm trusting you with my life here. Go, let's go down the line just to be safe here. But it's the same thing. She's split stepping, rack it back as the ball bounces. I think that might've been, there we go, that's it. So as the ball again comes up from the bounce, Mo lets the racket drop and drive. Split and get up. Good. Split. Good. So I'm alternating my feet from an underhand to a bounce feet. And Mo has to coordinate that. The bounce feet obviously comes at her faster. So ball comes faster and she has to adjust with her feet because I'm not as accurate. So bounce feet is a little faster. There we go. One more. So let's start being mean and I'm only going to do bounce feet. Ready? There we go. So the next drill is more advanced but you can still do it with just a hitting partner. You don't need coaches for, well, this drill and the previous ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fast drop feet. So I'll just show you the rhythm. Are you ready? Are you, can, can you properly square up and split step and all that? All right, ready? There we go. Good. And you see how Mo has to move way faster and she's shortening up the take back some. But look at the frequency. The many contacts she has, how fast she gets into this position. The racket is not quite as high as when we're rallying. So two things she's doing to get the proper contact point out in front. She's speeding up the whole thing, starting with the feet. Did you split step on all of those? Yes. I, I have it on video. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. So we're doing nine balls. Full intensity, and then also look at our racket work. Here we go. One, two, nice. Good. I'm not even looking at the results because I know that Mo's not gonna miss him. The question is, how good the quality of each ball is. Nice. That's a hell of an effort. Excellent. All right, we're going back to racket feeds, and now I'm just gonna mix it up. I'm going to give Mo different pace, different height, different spin, anything. When you're having issues with timing in the very beginning, I would suggest that you go in cross court because it's your higher percentage shot. Trying to change direction off of a tough ball, let's work on the basics first. So I'm picking up my pace a little bit more as opposed to the nice and easy ones that I fed her in the beginning. And Mo is still, of course, working on the split step. There we go. Good. All right, I'm gonna feed Mo a higher and slower one. And what you're gonna see is that she's actually slowing the whole loop down a little bit. And then I'll immediately after that feed her a faster one and you see how the footwork adjusts and also the swing pass adjusts. So here's a higher, slower one. She's got all the time in the world, but and then on the shorter one, she hits me, but her racket is in the proper position. And on both times, ball bounces, she can let the racket drop and drive into the ball. Next progression, you get a completely different bounce. Okay, so let's see if we can time that. So, so that ball has a lot more topspin. So the ball off the bounce has a lot more action and Mo has to, again, adjust to that. So that's the next progression. Just bounce feet. And this is maybe still something you can do with a partner. Excellent. All right, so different pace, different spin. Always have to adjust. Now the next one is a little tougher. 
We're doing sets of four balls. Everything to me and I volley them back. Mo has less time because I'm volleying everything back. And even if the balls are out, she's going to work with them. All right, balls come at her a little flatter, a little faster. She has to dip down to the ball a little bit more. Use your knees. Yep. Nice. And if I manage to hit him deep and flat, you see how she has to shorten up her take back and flatten out her loop a little bit as opposed to a ball here. You see how much time she has? So that is how you have to speed up or slow down your swing according to what you get. All right, next one. All right, we're getting into really advanced territory here. This is a drill that I think is a Spanish staple. I've seen so many Spanish coaches do this. First ball, I'm kind of drilling the ball out mo, fairly hard and flat. That's one of the balls where she has to sit against and get down to the ball, maybe shorten up her swing and still brush at the ball because it's really hard to control the ball by leaning back when it's low. I'm gonna hit a bounce feed and off of that one, she can change direction because it's gonna bounce a little higher. All right, here we go. We're doing sets of four. I don't care if you miss a ball, the next ball will come right in. So that's defense and here's your bounce. Take a chest high. Good, 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 good decision. Sit down, sit down and up. Try to get a chest high. There we go, nice, one more. Good. All right, defense. Oh, that's good. That is what you do. All right, that ball has a lot of action off the bounce. That is what the bounce feed does. And Mo's trying to get up to the ball. But still, look at that. She's moving so fast, perhaps so fast, that even on these balls, she still has time. And she has time to move up. And that is one of the really the components of a really advanced player. That no matter what the ball does, she's still able to take that on the rise. We're going to do one more. All right. All right, we're getting carried away here. Good. See if you can take even more time. Good. Chest high, chest high. Okay, got still controlled it. Nice. Excellent. Good. Key also is you notice that Mo missed the ball, but she never stopped. Got right back to the next ball because in that sequence you have a next ball. Don't get mad if you miss one ball out of eight. All right, we're going to put it all together. Rallying. Starts through the middle and then we'll do one more drill that I kind of hated as a kid and still hate it as a player, but that was super valuable. All right, so nice and easy rallying. And of course, the same is true for the backhand. Maybe I'll make another video about that. Ooh, I could have moved up on that. Definitely have to shorten it up. There you go. All right, last drill, the pinch drill. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go forehands cross court. You can do it backhands cross court. You can do it just through the middle, either one. I do wanna give it a little bit of direction too. You have to stay inside the baseline. If you're hitting a ball, even if the ball's good, but you're dropping behind the baseline, you're losing the point. So yes, you will have to make up stuff. You have to hit all kinds of awkward balls, but that's the point of the drill. Yeah, alleys are in. And you can hit backhands too if you must. Out, one zero me. And the good old slice. Here we go. Okay, on that one, I actually finally had time to step in. Good. All right, warning for this drill. It's not a feel good drill. It's not about developing rhythm. 
It's about recognizing balls and adjusting accordingly.